Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell, and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi kicks off BJP's election campaign in Assam, inaugurates key projects and the 12th South Asian Games in Guwahati. Nine people arrested, two police officials suspended for alleged assault and stripping of Tanzanian student in Bengaluru. Tanzanian High Commissioner and External Affairs Ministry officials joined the probe. Lieutenant Governor Najib Jung intervenes in the Delhi sanitation crisis, meets mayors, offers 300 crore loan to pay workers' salaries. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari wraps up three-day visit to Thailand, calls on Thai Princess Mahachakri Sirindran. And Indian teams for the World T20 and Asia Cup are announced. Mohammad Shami and Virat Kohli recalled into the side. A top story this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had a hectic day-long trip to Assam today. Apart from inaugurating key projects in the region, he also kicked off the BJP's election campaign in the pole-bound state. Later in the evening, he addressed the annual conference of the Sri Manta Sankaradeva Sangha in Shivasagar. His last engagement of the day was the inauguration of the 12th South Asian Games in Guwahati. On a day-long visit to Assam, Prime Minister Narendra Modi suggested a new development model for the northeastern states. He inaugurated two projects, a 10,000 crore petrochemical plant and a wax-making unit at the Numaligar oil refinery. The Prime Minister said, the development of the northeast region is a matter of priority for his government. Bharat ke purvi chhor ka vikas is par sabse jada bal dena ye hamari sarkar ki prathmikta hai. Aur tabhi jagrat jagar ke Bharat ka santulit vikas hoga, Bharat ka sarvangid vikas hoga. Prime Minister then officially launched the BJP's election campaign in the pole-bound state by beating the traditional drum in Dibrugarh, the hometown of party's chief ministerial candidate Sarbanand Sonowal. In his rally speech, Modi lashed out at the Gandhi family, blaming them for parliament disruptions. <laughs> He also used the occasion to flag the issue of Assamese pride urging people to give one chance to the BJP to form a government in the state. He contended that laws for the welfare of the state can be put in place only when there is a government in Guwahati which listens to the center. Post the election rally, the Prime Minister addressed the annual conference of the 15th century Vaishnavite saint Srimanth Shankaradev in Shiv Sagar. Over 3 lakh Vaishnavite devotees from across the state assembled at the 85th session of the conference. Modi then flew to Guwahati to inaugurate the 12th South Asian Games. Eight South Asian countries, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka are participating in the Games, being jointly hosted by Guwahati and Shillong. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So continuing the war of words between the government and the opposition Congress, party Vice President Rahul Gandhi has refuted allegations levelled by the Prime Minister. Responding to the Prime Minister's charge of one family not letting Parliament function smoothly, the Congress Vice President asked Modi not to make excuses and focus on working for the people of the country. Well, the job of the Prime Minister is to run the country. 
The job of the Prime Minister is not to make excuses. The Prime Minister, all the Prime Minister has been doing for the last one and a half years is to make excuses why the economy is not running, make excuses why the farmers are not getting their due, make excuses about why laborers are not getting what they should get. India did not choose Mr. Narendra Modi to make excuses. India chose a leader. And the leader should not make excuses. The leader should do the job that he's been elected to do. So the Congress today demanded a special investigation team probe into the reported land allotment to a company run by business associates of Gujarat Chief Minister Anand Bian Patel's daughter, Anar Jayesh Patel. According to media reports, the company was allotted 250 acres near the Gir Lion Sanctuary at an official rate of 15 rupees per square meter. The company allegedly owns 400 acres of prime land. Accusing the Prime Minister of turning a blind eye towards the deal, Congress leader Anand Sharma said the Chief Minister should resign over the allegations. और निष्पक्ष जांच के लिए यह भी आवश्यक हो जाता है कि गुजरात की मुख्यमंत्री जो उस समय राजस्व मंत्री थी और आज भी राजस्व विभाग है उनके पास जिन्होंने सरकारी जमीन 250 एकड़ रिसॉर्ट बनाने के लिए उन लोगों को दी जिनके व्यवसायिक निकट संबंध हिस्सेदारी उनकी स्वयं की पुत्री के साथ है इसलिए वो पद्याग दें the nine people have been arrested and two police officials suspended for the alleged assault and stripping of a Tanzanian student in Bengaluru. Tanzanian High Commissioner John W. H. Kijazi and External Affairs Ministry officials met officials of the state government in the city. Kijazi expressed satisfaction at the action taken by the Bengaluru police, but also advised people from Africa to be careful and follow the, law, follow the laws of the land. The incident happened on Sunday when an angry mob attacked a 21-year-old student in a case of mistaken identity. The mob was reportedly reacting to a woman being mowed down by a car driven by a Sudanese national. We are very much impressed by the action already being taken by the government. There are very concrete measures which have already been taken and they are continuing to do so. But what is more important is that we should look into the future because if you dwell very much on the past and you forget to make a clear way for the future, you will get lost. We believe that the communities can live in harmony, the local communities, the African communities. And once we achieve that stage, such incidents will not be happening in the future. I have told them, I have reassured them that such incidents will not happen and uh, actions uh, you know, what, what we have planned as a long-term uh, measures uh, considering the foreign students, particularly the African students, uh, about uh, their safety, uh, peaceful coexistence along with the community. Uh, we have already explained to them and they are convinced about it. In an attempt to resolve the issue of the MCD workers, I left in Governor Najib Jung today separately met the three mayors of the municipal cooperations at Rajnivas. Keeping in mind the difficulties being faced by the people of Delhi, Lieutenant Governor today made a unilateral offer of 300 crore rupee loan to the North and East Cooperation from the DDA. The Delhi government also released an amount of 693 crore rupees to the corporations. The total amount of 1,000 crore rupees will reportedly take care of the salaries of all employees and officials till the 31st of March. The Lieutenant Governor has now appealed to the MCD employee unions to call off their strike and resume work in the interest of the city and the people of Delhi. Meanwhile, the Delhi High Court today criticised the MCD for its workers' strike that has entered the 10th day today and issued notices to all the unions. I appeal to the three mayors that they appeal to the strike and that they come to Delhi. They are the services of Delhi and the services of Delhi. और जैसा कि हमने एलजी साहब से भी कहा है और केजरीवाल सरकार को भी हम पुनः चेतावनी देते हैं कि वो जल्द से जल्द दिल्ली नगर निगमों को परमानेंट सलूशन दे इंश्योर कर पा रहे हैं तो अब उनको काम पर आना ही चाहिए जो उनके पुराने एरियर्स की बात है उसकी उस समस्या का समाधान केवल और केवल चौथे वित्त आयोग के इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऐसी होने वाला है a couple leader, M. Padmanabham, today began an indefinite fast along with his wife to further push for his demand to include the Kapu community in the backward classes category. 
Uh, former Minister Padmanabham began uh, the indefinite fast at his native village in East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. He demanded that the Kapu reservation issue be resolved in three months and that 1,000 crore rupees be given annually for the benefit of the community. He also sought that false cases should not be filed against the community members in connection with the violent incidents that took place last Sunday in which five policemen were injured and public property worth crores damaged. In view of the fresh stir by Padmanabham uh, the, and to prevent any untoward incident, elaborate security arrangements have been made at the fast venue. The opposition left Democratic Front today boycotted the governor's customary address on the last session of the current Kerala Assembly. At one stage, the governor had told the LDF opposition members to sit quietly or leave as they tried to disrupt his address. This after he started his speech, citing key achievements of the Uman Chandi government that is facing bribery allegations in the bar and solar scams. The session that will last till the 25th of February is expected to be turbulent on account of the upcoming assembly elections and the two major cases facing the Chandi government. Either you sit quiet or you are free to go out. No, I, I, I am noting all your objections. No, beyond this, nobody can tolerate. When you have a right to protest, I am constitutionally bound to deliver. Kindly read the constitution. <laughs> Time now to take a look at what else has been making news around the country and nationwide. Vice President Mohammad Ahmed Ansari has expressed grief over the death of 10 army personnel in an avalanche in the Siachen Glacier in Jammu and Kashmir. The 10 personnel were buried under a mass of snow after being hit by an avalanche on Wednesday at a high altitude post on the glacier. Chief of the Army Staff, uh, General Dalbir Singh, also extended his condolences and ordered deployment of additional resources to reinforce rescue efforts. At least 14 people were injured when nearly nine coaches of the Bangalore Kanyakumari Island Express derailed near Vellore. The passengers were rescued and treated at the local government hospital. Preliminary investigations show that the derailment seems to be because of a break in the rail line. The National Green Tribunal today agreed to make a one-time exception to its order which banned all vehicles older than 15 years from flying on the roads of Delhi. They gave uh, their nod for the sixth edition of the 21 Gun Salute International Vintage Car Rally in the national capital on the 6th and 7th of February. Around 100 vintage cars and 25 vintage bikes will go from Red Fort to Greater Noida and around 50,000 people are expected to participate. A Delhi court today remanded 11 suspected ISIS operatives to NIA custody for seven days. The suspects were arrested from across the country for allegedly recruiting and financing people to join the Middle East terror group. The accused were produced in court amid tight security after expiry of their NIA custody. The NIA had initially sought custodial interrogation for 10 more days. Time for us to take a short break. Lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. Science failures te uh, teach you sometimes as much as the uh, successes do. There's no successful malarial vaccine. Correct. There are drugs to which the parasite becomes resistance. But the problem is why you don't have a vaccine, why you have resistance. The understanding of the molecular details help you address these issues uh, in a more, they may take time, in a more efficient way. Watch Eureka with Dr. Pushkar Sharma, scientist at National Institute of Immunology on Rajya Sabha Television. India's biggest newsmakers. Opinion makers of the day. I had uh, two questions. India, we all know we have been having a... The focus is really on highways. They are not stepping out and say that we will do it. Indirect interaction. You can donate I, but you cannot donate vision. The lack of the vision is an important problem in the country. RSTV takes television programming to a whole new level. 
watch Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari in full flow on Spotlight on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, Vice President Mohammad Hamid Dansari wrapped up his three-day visit to Thailand after calling on Thai Princess Maha Chakri Sirindon. Uh, the princess uh, will be conferred the uh, first World Sanskrit Award by India. Sirindon is a 60-year-old scholar of Sanskrit who was also the royal patron of the World Sanskrit Conference held in Bangkok last year. She will visit India to receive the award. She will be among uh, top Thai leaders who are expected to visit India this year. The dignitaries include... Prime Minister General Prayut chan -Ocha, Princess uh, Maha Vijray Longkorn and Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister. Over 600 Sanskrit scholars from 60 countries participated in the five-day World Sanskrit Conference last year, which was inaugurated by External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj. Now, the External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is in Sri Lanka for a two-day visit. On the first day of her visit, she called on Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, who sought Indian investment and offered partnership in setting up a special economic zone in the country. This is Swaraj's second visit to the country within a year. The Sri Lankan Prime Minister has also proposed to make a joint commission meeting an annual affair. The joint commission was set up in 1992 as a mechanism to address issues of bilateral cooperation. The last meeting of the joint commission was held in New Delhi in January 2013. Sushma and her Lankan counterpart uh, Mangala Samaravira will uh, co-chair the 9th Joint Commission meeting. The talks will cover the entire gamut of Indo-Lankan bilateral ties, including economic cooperation, trade, power, energy, technical and maritime cooperation, besides health, civil aviation, tourism and people-to-people -people contact. The fisherman issue is also likely to be raised in the Joint Commission meeting. Swaraj will also call on a President Maitri Pala Sirisena and former President Chandraga Kumaratunga, besides meeting other top leaders. Altogether, uh, we've discussed, as you see, all the sectors of collaboration in this multifaceted relationship. We've spoken about more than a dozen um, follow-up delegations, uh, joint working groups, standing committee groups in the various sectors. It's been a very satisfactory meeting, and it would add further momentum to the transformative uh, uh, in Peters, which has been part of this relationship since last year. The two MOUs that were signed in addition to the minutes, one was for the renovation of 27 schools in the northern province and another for the construction of a surgical unit and supply of medical equipment at the teaching hospital in Batikaloa. Now, the legal panel of the United Nations uh, says that Julian Assange should be allowed to walk free or be compensated for the deprivation of his liberty. Both Sweden and the UK government uh, denounced the decision. British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond said the panel's opinion was ridiculous and uh, said Assange is a fugi free, uh, fugitive from justice. The ruling is not legally binding in the UK where a European arrest warrant is in place. It places UK under a legal obligation to extradite Assange. Assange is uh, currently wanted in Sweden on rape allegations which he has denied. He, Assange was arrested in 2010 and has been dealing with the legal process since then. Uh, the diplomatic effect uh, will be uh, to make uh, life difficult uh, for Sweden and the United Kingdom uh, to be treated seriously as a international player, as international players that um, obey the international legal obligation. Their uh, attempts, if they proceed, to undermine the UN system. The working group maintains the arbitrary detention of Mr. Sanji should be brought to an end. And um, his physical integrity and his freedom of movement should be respected. And finally, if necessary, he should be entitled to an enforceable right to remedy, so -called co co for example, compensation. This is a, um, uh, frankly a ridiculous uh, finding by the working group and uh, we reject it. Julian Assange is a fugitive from justice. Um, he's hiding from justice in the Ecuadorian embassy. He can come out onto the pavement any time he chooses. He's not being detained by us. Um, but he will have to face justice in Sweden uh, if he chooses to do so. And it's right that he should not be able uh, to escape justice. 
Now, Europe today confirmed its first case of the Zika virus. Spanish Health Ministry said a pregnant woman who had recently returned from Colombia is infected. Meanwhile, Zika cases in Brazil have raised concerns of the virus transmission beyond mosquitoes. This was after two cases appeared to have been triggered by blood transfusion in Brazil on Thursday. Here's more. Spain on Friday confirmed a fresh case of Zika infection, the first of its kind in Europe. According to the Spanish Health Ministry, a pregnant woman who recently returned from Colombia is infected. Seven other cases were also confirmed in Spain. La mayoría de los casos que han ocurrido en Brasil, en Colombia, incluso en Micronesia, han sido casos donde hay mosquitos. Entonces, ¿cómo se infectó por el mosquito o por transmisión sexual? Eh, evidentemente, hasta ahora, lo más importante es el mosquito. O sea, yo diría 99.9% de la evidencia señala al mosquito. Obviamente, los científicos estamos buscando si es posible también la transmisión sexual. The South Pacific island nation of Tonga also declared an outbreak of the Zika, with five confirmed cases and another 259 suspected. In Australia, an adult who recently returned from Central America has tested positive to Zika virus. Meanwhile, in Brazil, concerns over Zika virus is mounting. This after two cases of Zika being transmitted through blood transfusions were reported in Brazil. Unsanitary conditions in slums adds to their worries as it provides breeding grounds for mosquitoes spreading Zika virus. Brazil will hold a national mobilization day later on Saturday to eradicate mosquitoes in homes and the offices. This canal has been kept up with this water stopped. There is a lot of muriçoca at night, no one can sleep. So, the muriçoca that has been kept up is already closed, you see? There is a lot of tilinol for us to drink. In Honduras, President Juan Orlando appealed for help in controlling the spread of Zika. 3,500 cases have been reported in Honduras. A vaccine for Zika seems a far-reaching dream, even though Bharat Biotech in India claimed they have developed one. The US, Brazil and other Latin American countries are closely monitoring the situation. The biggest concern now is microcephaly, a birth defect caused by Zika virus. Yet, the link with Zika and birth defects is still only strongly suspected. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Summer International News 9, Global Buzz. The Syria Donors Conference in London wrapped up last night with the chairs of the conference hailing its success. British Prime Minister Cameron announced that $6 billion have been raised for the Syrian crisis for 2016, with a further $5 billion until 2020. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said the conference was an unprecedented success. 49 people have been detained in connection with the chemical blast in the Chinese city of Tianjin. The blast occurred last August, killing 165 people. The government said on Friday that the blast put losses at more than $1 billion. Anger over safety standards is growing in China, and President Xi Jinping has vowed that authorities will learn the lessons paid for with blood. Hillary Clinton went on the attack against rival Bernie Sanders on Thursday in their most contentious presidential debate yet. She questioned if his ambitious proposals were viable, while Sanders fought back repeatedly, accusing Clinton of misrepresenting the political establishment. The, in the intensity of the exchanges increased over who would be best to lead the Na Democratic Party in the November elections. With high levels of unemployment in Zimbabwe, Mugabe's government, has, uh, Mugabe's government last year announced a scheme to export graduates to countries including South Sudan, Botswana, Angola and Namibia. The scheme was aimed at promoting green circulation on the African continent. Now, President Mugabe is debating whether to make exported workers send back 25% of their salaries to their families or deposit it into a pool monitored by the government. Some sports now and the Indian teams for the World T20 and Isha Cup were announced today. The units are along similar lines that contributed to the landmark 3-0 win against Australia and were named for three matches against Sri Lanka. The only changes being uh, Mohamed Shami was recalled and so was Virat Kohli. Seamar Mohamed Shami has been picked in the Indian squad for the World T20 and Asia Cup. Shami had returned from Australia with a hamstring injury and has not played for India since the 2015 World Cup. Virat Kohli, who was not part of the team for the three T20Is against Sri Lanka after being rested, has also made a comeback. He replaces Manish Pandey in the squad. Shami replaces Bhuvneshwar Kumar. 
And the advantage with Mohammad Shami is from now we have 30 days before we start the World Cup, T20 World Cup. Also, we have the Asia Cup, so we have good time for you know making a, a call on uh, Mohammad Shami. He's been our one of the best bowlers. He has recovered. He has started bowling. That's all I can say at, at the moment. The squad includes Mahindra Singh Dhoni as captain and wicket keeper. Rohit Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan, Virat Kohli, Ajinkya Rahane, Suresh Raina, Yuvraj Singh, Hardik Pandya, Ravindra Jadeja, Ravi Chandran Ashwin, Jaspreet Bumra, Ashish Nehra, Harbhajan Singh, Mohammad Shami and Pavan Negi. It is very important for selectors to pinpoint that in this shorter format, horses and courses have worked well. Looking at the last eight uh, IPL tournaments, and whatever domestic IPL T20, uh, T20 tournaments uh, BCCI are in New Zealand organizers then play, we have taken into account all the performances of not just 15, 16 guys, but those who have been part of this domestic cricket. Pavan Negi is the only uncapped player in the squad and has been picked based on his performance in the IPL and Ranji. He bowls quick left arm spin and is a big hitter down the order. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some more sports action now in Sportsbeat. The Supreme Court today directed the BCCI to implement the recommendations of the Justice RM Lodha Committee that has suggested massive restructuring of the cricket body. The Apex Court gave the board four weeks to respond on implementing the committee's suggestions. The Indian women cricket team retained the squad that won a historic T20 series against Australia recently for the Women's World T20s that starts in India from the 15th of March. The team will be captained by Mitali Raj, under whom the Indian women team had scripted history by recording their first ever bilateral series triumph against Australia last month. Former Ferrari boss Luca de Montezemolo uh, today said that the latest news about the health of seven-time Formula One uh, world champion Michael Schumacher is not good. The German is still receiving intensive care treatment at his home in Switzerland after severe head injuries that he suffered while skiing in 2013 in France. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.